Hi and welcome back. So a new and interesting study has looked into the specific reason there was a 204% delay in death in older people. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study into the delay in death has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by the British Medical Journal and was published in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health, which looked into one activity in particular that reduced stress and contributed to a considerable delay in death. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Back in 2017, 962 million people around the globe were over the age of 60. This is already a large number, but is projected to double by the year 2050. Consequently, a considerable amount of attention is now being focused on the concept of active or successful aging, an important component of which seems to be an active social life. A new study has suggested that frequent socializing may considerably extend the lifespan of older people. This study of more than 28,000 people was published online in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health. Socializing nearly every day seems to be most beneficial for a longer life. But most of the evidence for the health benefits of socializing in the past has been based on people who come from Western countries with little published data on those who live in Asia. This study has gone some way to addressing that disparity. To try and plug this knowledge gap, the researchers wanted to explore whether the frequency of socialising may be linked to overall survival in a relatively large group of older people. The participants were drawn from the Chinese Longitudinal Healthy Longevity Survey, an ongoing, prospective, nationally representative study of older people living independently which began in 1998. However, data collection on the frequency of socializing only started in 2002. The current study focuses on five separate waves of data collection up to 2019, involving a total of 28,563 participants with an average age of 89. The participants were asked how often they engaged in social activities and were told to record their answers as either almost every day, at least once a week, at least once a month, occasionally or never. Information on influential factors was also collected. This included their sex, their level of education, their marital status, household income, fruit and vegetable intake, lifestyle and any poor health. Survival was tracked for an average of five years or until the participants passed away. Let's take a look at the socialising results for the first five years. 25,406 people said they did not engage in any social activities. 1,379 said sometimes. 693 said at least once a month. 553 said once a week and 532 said almost daily. During the entire monitoring period, 21,161 or 74% of the participants passed away and with 15,728 of those dying in the first five years. Let's take a look at the death rates. Overall, more frequent social activity was associated with significantly longer survival with greater frequency of socializing being linked to a higher likelihood of living longer. For the first five years of the monitoring period, the standardized death rates were 18.4 per 100 people amongst those who never socialized, 8.8 .8 among those who did occasionally, 8.3 per 100 among those who did at least monthly, 7.5 amongst those who socialized at least once a week, and 7.3 per 100 amongst those who did so nearly every single day. So, how do those numbers work out as a percentage delay in death? Time to death was delayed by 42% in those who socialized occasionally, by 48% in those who did it at least monthly, 110% in those that said they did it weekly, and 87% in those who said they socialized every day, 
when compared to those who said they never socialised at all. Let's now take a look at the death rates after five years from the start of the monitoring period. The death rates were 6.2 people per 100 amongst those who never socialised, 4.8 amongst those who did occasionally, 5 in 100 among those who socialised at least once a month, 5.4 among those who did it at least once a week, and 3.6 per 100 amongst those who said they socialised nearly every day. The researchers stated that socialising nearly every day was associated with significantly longer survival, in that time to death was delayed by 204%. The factors associated with being more socially active were being male, of a younger age, having a higher level of education, being married, living in a town or city and or with relatives, and actual self-rated good health. When the data was further stratified by age, social activity seemed to be even more strongly associated with extended survival within the first five years of the oldest, suggesting that strategies to promote the maintenance of an active social life in very old people should be encouraged. As with all studies, there are some limitations that should be considered. This was an observational study, therefore it cannot establish cause, and the researchers acknowledge they were not able to include possible ebbs and flows in socialising or health behaviours over time. Behaviours such as diet, exercise, sleep, alcohol consumption, etc. Nor is it clear why socialising in older people might extend survival but some suggestions included enhancing healthier behaviours, such as more physical activity and even a better diet. It was also postulated that socialising may also mitigate the impact of chronic stress. Chronic stress can be internal, external or a combination of both, and is a consistent sense of feeling pressured and or overwhelmed for an extended period of time. It could include things such as poverty, a dysfunctional marriage, a toxic home environment, living in a high crime area, poor sleep, long term health issues and or a deeply dissatisfying job. The researchers concluded that in our study, although the association between social activity frequency and overall survival attenuated after adjusting for socio-demographic factors, socio-economic status, healthy behaviours and several morbidities, it still remained statistically significant, which indicated that social activity participation, per se, was an independent predictor for overall survival in older people. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Nothing new here with regard to stress. We all know that stress, as, a, as in psychological stress, can be a killer. But interesting that um, those who socialise every day compared to those who don't had a 204% delay in death. I'd be curious to see what they classed as actually socialising and for what length of time. Obviously, sitting alone watching Netflix isn't. But say you're at work and you have a half hour break two or three times a day and you break away and you do actually talk about things that aren't to do with work and you don't just sit scrolling through your phone. I wonder if that would be acceptable. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you socialise. Uh, let me know for how long. Uh, let's say it has to be longer than 30 minutes and has to be more. there has to be more than one other person there. So let's say longer than 30 minutes and with at least with a group of three. I'd be interested to see how many people do actually socialise at least once a day.